We did a meta-analysis of all the randomized controlled studies looking on the application of pacuitaxel-coated balloons or pacuitaxel-coated stents in the femoral popliteal segment for the treatment of symptomatic peripheral vascular disease. Uh, we looked on a number of studies, 28 in total. Uh, there were more than a couple of thousand of cases included and we looked at the different time intervals up to one year, up to two years and up to five years and we checked the risk of death associated with the use of those devices. Now interestingly there was no difference up to one year. Nonetheless at two years the risk of death was nearly 60 to 70 percent higher and up to five years that went up to 80 to 90 percent higher. So we are looking at a nearly double rate of death associated with the use of those pacuitaxel coated devices in a relatively benign patient population. So those were predominantly chronicant patients. They were not suffering from critical, critical ischemia. So we had this alarming finding that in the setting of a benign treatment for a benign condition like intermittent co-education, the patients were exposed to a potentially higher risk of death. At the end of the day, for every kind of medication, there is a therapeutic level and there is a toxic level. Uh, we can only speculate. Uh, I think it comes down to the crystalline pro properties of pacritaxel, which basically acts as a depot effect within the human body. We do know that a significant part of the pacritaxel being loaded on those devices may embolize in the systemic circulation and very little is actually left on the, uh, on the arteries themselves. So there is no question about the efficacy of the, of, of the substance because it does significantly inhibit stenosis. But at the same time, we think that the very extended half-life of the crystalline pacritaxel within the human body may actually contribute to this uh, long-term, this late, higher risk of death associated with the use of those devices. The message is that we have a very strong statistical signal with a very high certainty that it is associated with a significantly increased risk of death. At the end of the day, for the time being, we really do not know what we do not know. We need to have a deeper dive into this substance, into this medication. There is no question that it is effective. At the same time, I think there is no question that there are some significant and very important safety signals associated with the pacuitaxel. We need to ask the companies, we need to look at longer term data, we need to conduct what we call individual patient data analysis for every individual device. So everything has to be put to the test. Actually there are several ones several strengths and several weaknesses. Every meta-analysis is only as good as the studies that it combines. Fortunately, those were quite well conducted randomized controlled studies being run by the industry with independent adjudication. Uh, not all of them had long-term follow-up, so this is the, the weakness A. Weakness B is that there were different of kinds of balloons and stents tested different formulations being included, so there might be some unknown heterogeneity that may confound our results. Nonetheless, we had enough of a sample size and we did complex statistical analysis to try to refute any kind of type 1 and type 2 error. Type 1 error means false positives, so with 99% certainty we think that we have excluded a false positive finding and that in fact the risk of death is there. I think that we shouldn't quickly dismiss the use of pacuitaxel. We need to very, very carefully try to scrutinize the findings. Every different device has to be put to the test and to, to, to be looked upon very, very judiciously. The companies need to be encouraged, if not obliged, to provide us longer-term longer follow-up. So every device has to provide perhaps three to five years of follow-up. 
and then the ones that are for the time being available, they need to be able perhaps to combine their own strengths and come up with individual patient data analysis so we can regress and we can condition and we can adjust on the individual confounding factors perhaps that may be, uh, may be increasing the statistical artifacts.